A zombie virus that was buried under the ice of Siberia for thousands of years has been brought back to life. Are we facing the next pandemic? If you want to know how dangerous this virus is for us and what it is doing to our health, then be sure to stay tuned until the end. And if you like it, I'd be delighted to get a thumbs up and a comment because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people. Thank you, friends, and welcome. A team led by French researchers Jean-Marie Olympic and Mathieu de Jean from the University of Marseille have resurrected a 50,000-year-old zombie virus that has been buried in a frozen lake in Russia for thousands of years. And as if that wasn't enough material for a new zombie apocalypse movie, these things are also contagious. Why do scientists do this? Have they never seen horror movies? Okay, before we panic and look at how contagious this Methuselah virus really is, let's first take a brief excursion into the global climate. Around a quarter of the northern hemisphere is covered by permafrost, meaning the ground is completely frozen. However, global warming is causing these permafrost soils and glaciers in all parts of the world to melt and the eternal ice to retreat. In some areas of Siberia, the ice has already completely disappeared revealing some really strange things. A bit like on my desk when I sweep the potato chips crumbs aside. A lot of things open up there too, but it's nowhere near as scary as in Siberia. In 2007, reindeer herder Juri Chudi discovered the carcass of a baby mammoth that had been exposed due to the melting ice. Normally, the permafrost in Siberia is permanently frozen, but as mentioned, the earth is warming up, and so the ice keeps thawing in certain places. The 50-kilogram mammoth was over 10,000 years old and was perfectly preserved in the ice. Cloning experts are already dreaming of the rebirth of mammoths. There would probably be something like chili con mammoth or delicious mammoth crust roast in restaurants. Okay, I shouldn't make videos when I'm hungry. What does all this have to do with the virus? A lot, because the thawing of permafrost soils not only reveals sweet mammoths, but also all kinds of organic material cellular microbes, and, with the emergence of animal carcasses, prehistoric viruses. And, of course, scientists need to know all about these viruses in order to rule out potential dangers to humanity. For this reason, the researchers have now resurrected 13 of these zombie viruses from the eternal ice, which were isolated from seven different permafrost soils. You have to imagine that. These viruses lay under the ice for thousands of years, and then suddenly a few humans come along and pull them out of their slumber. And then there's not even a prince, but figures in white coats. But none of this is really new. Researcher Jean-Marie Olympic has been on the trail of killer viruses from the permafrost for several years. Now, however, his team has published the current state of research on the 13 previously unknown viruses mentioned. But before we look at the question of how infectious these reactivated viruses could be for us now, Let's first clarify how it is even possible for these viruses to be revived thousands of years later. We have to imagine the permafrost soils as a kind of freezer under the earth. We speak of permafrost when the temperature at this location is permanently below zero degrees Celsius for at least two consecutive years. So everything there is permanently frozen. Organic material can be very well preserved under such conditions. You may have heard of the idea of cryopreservation. In this process, Cells or tissue are frozen in liquid nitrogen, and the vitality of the cells is optimally maintained. If I die later because of eating too much pizza or something, I definitely want to be cryopreserved. Imagine being woken up at a time when interstellar travel is possible, and there are no more NPC challenges on the internet. I definitely don't want to miss that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Would you freeze yourselves so as not to miss out on the future? Or do you think it's wrong? And if so, why? I'm very curious to hear your opinion. Okay, before we get too philosophical here, let's get back to our viruses. In a laboratory, researchers have made these viruses virulent again in cell cultures, i.e., brought them back from the dead. That's where the name zombie virus comes from. Not because these viruses can turn us all into zombies. Although I have the feeling that some people in the pedestrian zone are already zombies, 
One of these viruses is said to be a whopping 48 of them 500 years old, a real Methuselah, and the oldest virus ever discovered, which researchers have christened the Pandora virus Yedema. This virus is also incredibly large. It can be detected with a normal light microscope. So it's not just a zombie virus. Now, it's a giant virus. I'm starting to feel really queasy. But the reactivation of viruses alone is nothing unusual, as viruses are generally stored at sub-zero temperatures and can be woken up again and again. However, the 13 viruses of the French researchers were even able to duplicate themselves. They threw small amoebae into the virus shells, and the result was that all 13 viruses became infectious and infected the amoebae. Poor amoebae. The dangerous thing about these viruses is that the genome does not resemble any of the viruses we know today. If this virus were to break out and also infect humans, we would have no research and certainly no medication. However, the researchers from France have not yet been able to say how long these viruses will remain infectious. As the viruses from the permafrost are exposed to completely new conditions such as UV radiation, oxygen, and heat, when they thaw. In addition, the virus must then find a suitable host. Oh my God. <laughs> She's so drunk. <laughs> the reassuring news from the researchers. No, panic is not appropriate for the time being. Albert Osterhaus, director of the Research Center for Emerging Infections and Zoonosis at the University of Veterinary Medicine Hanover, is also reassuring. He says, the chance that such viruses will lead to really big problems is small but never 100% absent. He estimates the danger posed by such zombie viruses to be low, especially if the viruses have lain dormant in animal carcasses thousands of years old. However, the situation is different if researchers come across human corpses in the eternal ice. Here, there is a high risk of viruses breaking out for which our immune system is simply no longer trained. So folks, if you ever dig around in glaciers or permafrost and find a mummy preserved by ice, be the first to tell Brendan Fraser. <laughs> Michael Buchmeyer, Professor Emeritus of Infectious Diseases at the University of California, who was not involved in the study says, nothing in the study suggests that these viruses are capable of infecting humans. He considers it very unlikely that a future pandemic will be caused by a pathogen revived in the study. We can therefore conclude that the reactivated viruses do not pose a threat to our health, at least not yet. However, the study situation is still too thin to be able to make really reliable statements. With their publication, the researchers from Marseille are now hoping for further support from other scientists to bring more clarity to the world of zombie viruses. This is a really important idea and I hope that the scientists stay on top of the subject because who knows what else is romping around in the permafrost and could possibly be released in the future. If you haven't got goosebumps from so much permafrost yet, then hold on tight, and a pole shift could soon be imminent and such an event would really shake up the climate and our entire civilization. You can find out how high the danger really is and when we should expect the pole shift in the video shown. Be sure to click on it, and if you want to support my work, then browse through the Space Store, where you can buy real meteorites, the shirts from the videos, and much more. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, friends.